Praise the Lord. Good morning. It's great to see everyone this morning. We want to welcome everyone. We want to welcome our visitors this morning. We're glad that you've joined us, and we would invite you to stop by after service to the, the new Welcome Center. We have something for you, so that's for all our visitors. Please stop by. Just have one quick announcement. Next Sunday morning is our homecoming service. We will be having the Sons of Liberty here in the service, and then we'll be having an all-church dinner in the Fellowship Hall. Please see the sign-up sheet in the Welcome Center as well so you know what to bring but we're looking forward to just a great service in the Lord as always so again we just look forward to what God's going to do this morning you know the the Bible says but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting I'm so thankful for God's mercy today and his grace so join with me as we open the service with some prayer our precious Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for this opportunity that you've blessed us with to be able to gather together in your house to worship you with God's people. And we just thank you, Lord, for the family of God today. We thank you, Lord, to be a child of the Most High King. What a privilege and what an honor. And, Lord, what a joy it is to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords today. And, Lord, we invite your presence and power today in our midst. We pray, Holy Spirit, you would guide, lead, and direct everything that is said and done. And most importantly, we pray, Holy Spirit, convict those that need you today. Draw the lost to Christ, and may they surrender their heart and life to Jesus Christ. We just thank you again. We surrender all to you, and we thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning, everyone. It's a blessing. Please remain standing. It's because that he lives that we can worship here today. Let's sing. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He
Praise the Lord. I hope that you are happy that you are here this morning. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is in this place. We're going to get the prayer in a moment, but I have an announcement. I'm going to have to interrupt his study for a moment. Brother Kevin, Pastor, would you come here? It appears... It, it appears that our pastor had a birthday. Oh. And, yeah. and praise God, we're singing about the Holy Spirit, and I don't say things that's not true. I know he preaches the word. We just sung about the Holy Spirit. God has placed that spirit in this man, his vessel, our pastor. Let him know you love him on his birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear pastor, happy birthday to you. Now, you know he's not lost for words. He's, he's being humble right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. The now getting back to something very serious, and that's prayer. Uh, God uh, gives us a very powerful tool in prayer. And uh, those of us that are truly born again, filled with that Holy Spirit, there's power in prayer. For the Bible said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, a righteous woman, availeth much. So look at how many of God's children are here today. And if we'll just obey the Spirit, the Bible said he didn't, he didn't have an ear hear what the Spirit said. So you listen this morning as we read these names. Remember these and many, many others that won't get mentioned, but God knows every prayer request. Want to remember the Barry Glover family? Barry passed away yesterday. Continue to remember Janice Leniger. She's recovering from knee surgery. Remember Judy and Lori Carpenter. Let's remember James Dykes. Let's remember Cora Brewer. Continue to remember Pastor Gerald Rudd. Let's continue to remember Megan Ward. Remember Scott Perkins. Remember Macy Miller. Remember Joanne Campbell, that's Janet Newman's niece, cancer. Let's remember our unsaved loved ones. We all have family members, we all have friends around us that need to be saved. And let's never ever forget our country, our nation. And never ever forget those that makes it possible. That down through the years, today and in the future, for us to have the freedom that we have to sit here this morning in this sanctuary and praise our God. 
and go to him in prayer and know that he cares and he's heard and he's going to answer our prayers. I look back and Brother Bob McCarty, can you make it up this way to lead us in prayer this morning? Somebody standing up, sister. needs also everybody that can that stand come to the altars let's humble ourselves before god almighty knowing that that which we ask in the name of jesus we shall receive well we go in prayer I, bl- I believe we need to pray for the nation i know you hear that over and over but i think we're letting it slip through our hands you're the only thing stopping this country from going communist A Christian, if you don't stand up, you're going to lose it. So, and they make the statement that Christianity don't mix with government. I beg your pardon. The the government was run by Christian men. The Constitution was written by Christian men. Decoration has, and all the things above. And you used to have a black robe brigade standing here. That's with black robes on, with guns under, protecting their congregation. The, God's been in control of this country for a long time, and now it's, and the Lutheran Church in Sweden, five million people, members across that nation, they were changing their name to Trance Church. Transgender is what they're talking about. I'm in a church where we're transformed from out of sin into the marvelous light. This morning, I think we need to make a stand. My heart is heavy today as I listen and think about people don't even want to respect the people that died on this. Uh, they had a survey yesterday. And they, everyone, a lot of them said, we don't know nothing about it. We don't care about those guys. But I tell you what, God cares about every one of us. We're in God's army this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, we know that you didn't feel good when they beat you at Pilate's Hall. Oh, you suffered untold agony by the trees that your back was ripped open so these people could be healed this morning. These special requests are little precious people of God that need some Christian to stand up and pray together. We're two or three together. You said you're in the midst. Uh, we're two are praying. This shall be done. God, this morning we're not a weak knee beat down church of God, but we're the blood bought. Uh, amen. A royal priesthood, uh, a joint heir to Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm glad this morning uh, I'm in the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm not waiting on no kingdoms. Uh, I'm in the kingdom. Uh, my kingdom that I'm in uh, is everlasting kingdom. Uh, there was no end to it. Uh, I thank the word of God forever. Uh, I thank God the kingdom of God forever. Uh, I thank my salvation if I hold on to it is forever. Uh, heaven's forever. Hell's forever. God, we thank God this morning together, together with God's people. You worship with the saints of God. Uh, hear the preaching of God's Word. Uh, what a privilege it is. Uh, let's don't let it slip through our fingers, Lord. Uh, when I say, I pray at night, uh, bring us back to a godly nation again. Where the world recognizes us as a godly nation. People said it's not possible the way things are going. But all things are possible if we'll only believe. 
when it's impossible with man, it's possible with God. This morning I'm looking for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost this morning. I didn't come to church just to sit in the pew. I didn't come here this morning to be seen and heard. But I come to hear the Word of God. And I'm glad that I'm under the spout where the glory's coming out. I, I'm stepping in the holies of holies. I, there ain't no priest stepping in. I got a high priest I talk to. And we thankful this morning you heard every request, every precious name mentioned. Uh, we know that there's people in here this morning that's got spiritual needs. I, I feel it in my spirit. Uh, there's people in here this morning that uh, is not caught on to getting in fully this morning. Uh, we know that uh, if we're lukewarm, you just spew us out of your mouth. Uh, we're wasting time, uh, but we need to get a hold of the arms of the horns of the altar. We need to really get down to nitty gritty with God and make sure our election is sure. We've got people watching us this morning. My children watch me. My neighbors watch me. And if I don't walk right, they're not going to believe what I'm saying. If they don't see me get in that car, they wonder what's wrong with me. They know I'm either sick or I'm gone to church. God, we're thankful this morning it's not just checking in, but I'm here to participate in whatever the Holy Spirit wants me to participate. If it's an amen, if it's a tear, if it's a blessing, if it's praying with somebody, I'm here to be God's servant this morning. I'm thankful this morning that we're on this side of the grass this morning, able to make decisions. Once the lights go out, it's all, it's out forever this morning. We want to pray for that young man that is my cousin that they had in revival on that a uh, uh, wheelchair, upstanding wheelchair. He's got double pneumonia. He's in a coma. That's terrible for him because he could go any time. God, we just pray this morning a great function of the Holy Spirit, anointing power of God wherever he's at in what hospital. In Jesus' name, God, we pray for everybody lost. That's the worst sickness because that'll damn your soul forever. Imagine in hell forever. I'm just imagining heaven forever. I'm on 30, Highway 35 this morning. Isaiah 35. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. I'm glad there's detours, but I'm not paying any attention. I've got my eyes on Jesus this morning. The, high, the finisher of my faith this morning, the author and the finish. And we just pray this morning for a blessing. If we come on feelings, sometimes we wouldn't be here. But I'm glad this morning I'm not on feelings. I'm glad this morning I'm feeling what God's given me this morning. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for this church. Pray for this pastor. God, you allowed him to live another year. And anoint him this morning. Not We don't want to hear Kevin. We want to hear what the Holy Spirit's pouring out of Kevin. A faithful vessel. An honored vessel of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have Jesus than silver or gold? I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather.
church. Morning. Morning. I'm glad to be home. <laughs> Even though I miss my family in Florida, I also miss my family up here too. My physical family and my church family. There were times when um, I needed a safe retreat and I would listen to the messages, listen to the singing, and I could feel your prayers. And God blessed me through that. This first song talks about that. From every stormy wind that blows. In the one of the verses, it's written, there is a scene where spirits blend, where friend holds fellowship with friend. Though far apart, by faith we meet around one common mercy seat. In the key of C, guys. for me this morning. These are songs that I was looking through my book and I came upon these songs and I they're very, very old songs but the words to them are still so good. 
this next song, it was written by Frances Jane Van Alstyne. She was more commonly known as Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby was an American mission worker. She was a poet, a lyricist, and a composer. She wrote, now listen to this, she wrote more than 8,000, not 8, not 80, not 800, but 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. And she also was blind. She lost her sight to an eye infection when she was only six weeks old. She enrolled at the New York Institution for the Blind at age 15. There she learned to play the piano, the organ, the harp, and the guitar. She also was a pretty good soprano singer. And she wrote several of our favorites, such as, Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And I think she wrote this one while she was doing her, mis her mission work. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus can save. And one of our favorites, I believe we sang it Sunday night, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, praising my Savior all the day long. And one of pastor's favorites. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things things he hath done. I see why, Pastor, that's one of your favorites. But even though she wrote this song that I'm going to sing, she wrote it back in 1879. That's an old song. I told you guys I was going to sing an old song this morning. The words still ring true today. Now keep in mind, she was blind. She was totally blind. And in one of her verses, she writes, In the cross, my trust shall be, till with clearer, brighter vision, face to face, my Lord, I'll see. Simply says, take the world, but give me Jesus. Take the world, but give me Jesus. All the joys are but a name, but his love abideth ever. Though eter through the eternal years the same. Oh, the height and depth of his mercy. Oh, the length and breadth of his love. Oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above. Take the world. But give me Jesus, sweetest comfort of my soul. With my Savior watching o'er me, I can sing though billows roll. Oh, the height and depth of his mercy, oh, the length and breadth of his love. 
Oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above. Take the world, but give me Jesus. Let me view his constant smile. Then throughout my pilgrim journey, light will cheer me all the while. Oh, the height and depth of his mercy, oh, the length and breadth of his love, oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of endless life above. So take this world, but give me Jesus in his cross, my trust shall be till with clearer brighter vision face to face my lord i'll see oh the height and depth of his mercy oh the length and breadth of his love oh the fullness of redemption pledge of endless life above yes through the fullness of his redemption he's promised us endless life above praise the lord I'm so glad that to have that vision that Ms. Flora Pastor has been preaching on uh, getting a fresh vision of things that we should be, we should have a handle on. And uh, he, uh, he's kind of, he kind of, he asked us to do this one. And so we're going to try it anyway. I've heard people talk about heaven and describe its beauty so rare. So one day I purchased a title to a mansion in that land so fair. It was given to me without money, but it cost by your Savior his life. He died on the cross without murmur For me he paid the great price I hold a clear title to a mansion That Jesus has gone to prepare With fire cannot touch it, no rust cannot harm it And it never will need a repair Are its foundation for the long rock of ages it stands, and a few that is almost completed and ready for me to move in. Well, my deed was both signed and recorded the day Jesus saved me from sin, and my name was engraved in gold. Lamb's book of life safe within. I'm an heir to a mansion in glory. Well, on this old world I roam, and I'm waiting for Jesus to call me. Then I'll lay down my cross and go home. I hold a clear title to a mansion that Jesus has gone to. Fire cannot touch it, no rust cannot harm it, and it never will need a repair. The termites can't mar its foundation, for on the rock of ages it stands. And a view that is almost completed, and ready for me to move in. 
of heaven where there never come heartache nor pain there'll never be crepes on the door knob or death will be a stranger up there where goodbyes they'll never be spoken and the cheapest thing there is pure gold no I can't afford to miss it or all the will this world holds I hold a clear title to a mansion that Jesus has gone to prepare fire cannot touch it no rust cannot harm it and it never will need a repair the termites came bar and found Almost completed and ready for me to move in. I like that last verse. I'm so glad for that promise of heaven where there'll never come heartache nor pain. There'll never be crates on the doorknob, or death will be a stranger up there. Where goodbyes they'll never be spoken and the cheapest thing there is pure gold no I can't afford to miss it for all the wealth this world holds I hold a clear title to a mansion that Jesus has gone to prepare where fire cannot touch it no and it never will need a repair. The termites can't mar its foundation. For on the rock of ages it stands. And I feel that it's almost completed and ready for me to move in. Yes, I feel that it's almost completed and ready for me. Well, glory, glory. Moving day is coming someday. We're going to be moving on up. Moving on up. <laughs> oh, my. I guess I am showing my age a little bit there. <laughs> you remember that song. <laughs> We're going to be moving on up. We're going to be moving onward and upward to be with King Jesus forever and ever. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a little homesick for heaven. Glad that you're here this morning. I'm glad the Lord is here. You know, every race has a finish. Every book has a final chapter. Every trail has an end. Every building has a completion. Every traveler has a home. The church that came down from heaven will someday be called up. She's going to be called home to God. That glorious church that John beheld in Revelation, when he said, Revelation 21, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. How many know that bride is the church? And that husband is Christ, and he's coming for his bride. To those who belong to him, Christ will take with him to his eternal home, his home. We're going to be going home with Jesus. The Bible says we shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. He doesn't need to come back to earth to accomplish anything. He did it at Calvary. When he burst the bars of death and overcame death and hell and came forth, my friend, he's the one that said, I am he that liveth was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore and hold the keys of death and hell. 
Now the Bible speaks of that place, heaven, heaven. Over 500 times speaks of heaven. The goal of every Christian, the crown of the faithful and true, the final chapter of God's glorious salvation plan is culminated in our our arrival to make heaven our final destination when this light Life is over. Heaven, happy home above. Heaven, land of peace and love. Oh, it makes me feel like traveling on. Heaven, supernal. Heaven, eternal. I'm so glad it's real. If ever there was a time we need a fresh vision... It is now. We need to have the vision of God. We've been preaching this series on a fresh vision. And this morning, I would want to look into the fresh vision of heaven. First Peter chapter 1. Would you take your Bibles? Let's all stand together to honor the Lord and His Word. First Peter, we begin in verse... Three. The Bible records, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible, and undefiled, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. May the Lord add his blessing this morning. Let's all join together in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray you would bless it and break it and multiply it. And Father, may the souls of your people be fed. Lord, we need to hear a fresh word from heaven. And it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And Father, we just, we, we throw ourselves upon your mercy this morning. We abandon, Lord, our ideas and our notions and our thinking of things that we can reason. But Lord, help us, Father, to see into the things that are, Lord, uh, to, to, to the unsaved are unknown. But reveal them by your spirit. To the hearts of your people. And God speak to the lost this morning. We pray for conviction Lord. We realize the time is near. Jesus is coming soon. Father decisions need to be made immediately. To turn from our wicked ways. Seek your face. And Lord you promise to forgive. And heal our land. And so I pray this morning. Grant boldness to your servant. May Christ be honored and glorified in all we say. Crown this service with someone getting saved. We pray in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Please, you may be seated. You know, the Bible speaks of Christians being as strangers and pilgrims. We are strangers and pilgrims here upon this earth. Just as Peter would let us know over in that second chapter, where he would say down in verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. In other words, this world is not our home. Thank God. It's not our final destination. Those that are saved, heaven is. We we will dwell to be with God, to dwell with Christ, to be with those in heaven whom we want to see in God's home. And friend, it is for eternity. That's why we must abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. This I do know you're going to live a Christian life, you're going to have to fight some battles. 
There's spiritual battles we fight. We don't use fleshly weapons, but we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible declares to us our conversation is in heaven. That means that we are to live as citizens of that place. That we have in heaven a better and enduring substance. That which will last. That which will remain. That which won't fade away. I'm glad this morning that we've got something to look forward to. When this life is over, death has not the victory. Thank God Jesus has risen from the grave. And I'm thankful this morning he's gone to prepare a place for us. And at Calvary, he made that place available for you and me. He's just waiting on you to fulfill the reservation he's made for you. Now the Hebrew writer tells us of a better country, a heavenly country that we're to pursue, we're to follow after with all of our heart. That is why we're told, Paul spoke to the church in Colossians, he said in Colossians 3, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In other words, we must hold loosely to the things of this world. Don't let this world and its gravity hold you down. Cling to the cross. Cling to the hope that we have in Christ. In other words, we must not get so caught up in this world and getting all we can. But church, we need to give ourselves to serving our Lord and showing his love and salvation to those that are lost. We must follow our Lord Jesus. Just like when God called those Israelites to come out of Egypt and Egyptian bondage, he used Moses to lead his people out. But I'm thankful that Christ came from heaven to earth. And friend, if you follow Jesus, he'll lead you out of the bondage of sin. And you can travel onward and upward and forward to Canaan land as God's people. He's called us to live a holy, sanctified life. We can dwell in Beulah land right here and now. What's that mean? That means the Lord's come from above. He's come to dwell in you. And thank God this morning when you've got the Lord in you, He makes all the difference in the world. Friend, I want to tell you, Man, I wouldn't trade anything for my journey. That place called heaven. The Bible declares heaven is where the Lord's throne is. The Bible declares heaven is God's home. The Bible declares heaven is where the angels dwell. Heaven is the home of the saved. Heaven is the reward of the redeemed. Heaven is where the Spirit of God always is. The Holy Ghost is always there. Amen. But best of all, Christ is there. Amen. Best of all, heaven is where we will be with Jesus. Where there is no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death. No more dying. No more separation. No more tears. The Bible tells us in the Revelation 21, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. There'll be no sin in heaven. There'll be no sinners in heaven. Only those that are saved by grace through faith in Jesus alone. There'll be no complainers in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> There'll be no murmurers in heaven. There'll be no murderers in heaven. There'll be no haters. There'll be no mean-spirited people in heaven. There'll be no drunkards. I could go on, but the Bible says 
They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Only those who have joined the blood-washed throng will worship at God's throne. We'll put on a crown and walk around all over God's promised land. When the apostle Stephen was about to be stoned to death, you remember, by those who hated Jesus, Stephen looked up, he saw into heaven, he saw the Lord. And the Bible records, he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Friend, that is what helped Stephen through the worst that man could do to him. Through the worst of situations, he saw, thank God, the best is yet to come. He saw into heaven. He saw the glory of God. He saw all of glory, God's glory awaiting. But he saw Jesus standing. He who stood up was ready to receive him. Home into glory. Into God's home. My friend to be absent from the body. For the Christian is to be present with the Lord. This same Jesus is looking for you. Whatever, friend, you're going through or facing, look up. Look up in the midst of every situation. Look up in every circumstance and heartache. Look up the, beyond what man can do to you. Look up. Why? Because the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Friend, I'm not just trying to give you a pep talk. I'm telling you the truth this morning. We hear that promise God gives us in Romans 8 where he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In other words, the Apostle Paul saying the glory will outweigh the suffering of this life. The suffering is but for a moment, but the enjoyment of God is for eternity. I want to tell you, that's the truth that it ought to do something for us. The truth has helped many Christians face life's hardest trials and darkest situations and most difficult roads. Those that have found in Christ looking to Him and His glory. Listen, that glory that's found in Christ outweighs all heartache of this present world. The glory of God, heaven's glory, how many you know outpays all the devil can ever give us? All that he can all promise. Listen, my friend, is anything of this earth. He tempted Jesus with all the kingdoms of this world. But Jesus had something far better. You see, but Christ, by what he accomplished on the cross, of Calvary for you and I. He made the way. He's the bridge. His blood shed cleanses every sin. And friend, it is by the power of his resurrection he has overcome death. He has, he has made it possible, as Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can say Christ has outmatched the wages of sin and Satan. This I know, the King of glory, the King of heaven, the King of kings. King Jesus reigns forever and ever. Where does he reign? He reigns in heaven. But thank God he can reign in your heart this morning. Jesus looked at the Pharisees and said, the kingdom of God is within you. He was telling them Stop looking for an earthly kingdom. And don't make me an earthly king. Jesus is the king of kings. This is why the apostle Paul could say in 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 
In other words, Paul knew what he was fighting for. He knew what he was running for. He knew what he was living for. And he goes on and says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. That crown of righteousness is the crown of heaven for those who have lived for Christ, those that have loved him. He will crown you. He will crown the faithful, those who have surrendered their lives, submitted to God, those that have been washed in the blood of Jesus, saved by grace, overcome and inherited just as God's promised. My friend, I want to tell you, yes, the best is yet to come. Oh, this life is full of, I'm telling you, it's full of blessings. But this isn't all there is. Now we see here in 1 Peter, where Peter is telling us to get our focus on the main thing, on the main goal. Get our focus on God, off of this world. And he's telling us heaven is an inheritance for the redeemed of God, which is incorruptible. Heaven is an inheritance that's undefiled, and heaven is an inheritance that fadeth not away. Notice again, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of, the, of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Adrian Rogers well put it, the devil gives the best first and the worst last. But the Lord saves the best for last. I can tell you this morning, friend, whatever God calls you to do, do it with all your heart for His glory. I'm thankful God delivered me out of a life of sin. I'm glad that God reached down and lifted me out of the mire. I'm thankful every day to be part of the redeemed, the blood washed. I'm thankful this morning that I don't have to live in a cycle of sin and, and, and be defeated. But thank God, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Julie will tell you I'm not perfect. <laughs> but I can tell you I'm saved by the grace of God. And I have the help of the Holy Spirit every day. And that which I want to do is please Him in everything. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to be able to celebrate another year. I'm thankful for, to be married almost 32 years. I'm thankful for our four children. I'm thankful for our three grandchildren. I'm thankful to be part of God's family. I'm thankful. We've got a lot to be thankful for. But I'm telling you, the best is still yet to come. As I look out here this morning, it's good to see Marvin and Katie Pearson here this morning. We have missed you all. We praise God that you're here, brother and sister Pearson. How long have you all been married? How long have you all been married? A long time. (laughs) How long? 40 years. Glory to God. You know, they've been through a lot. But by the grace of God, they're still pressing on for Jesus. They're still, what a testimony they leave to us. They give us. You see, this inheritance is only given to those who are truly saved. Hear me this morning. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. Friend, if your name is not in the book of life, You're going to miss heaven. I don't record your name there. No pastor records your name. There's no church membership or record. The names in the book of life are recorded by God. And he records those who are saved. But he says this inheritance is given to only those who are saved. 
is an inheritance that's incorruptible, which means there's no decay. It never wears out. Thank God rust won't eat it away. Termites can't eat it up. This inheritance is undefiled, which means nothing impure can enter. Nothing impure. I could give you a list of things that would keep you out of heaven. I could give you a whole list of things. I could preach to you for hours on things that will keep you out of heaven. But rejecting Christ alone is enough to keep a man or a woman out of heaven. You're rejecting of Christ. Now, I'm not talking about a Christ of your own imagination who would comfort you in a life of sin, but I'm talking about a, a Christ who you love and you walk in obedience. I've heard people lately saying, you know, Pastor, I've taken a leap of faith, but I knew they weren't walking with the Lord. It's good to take a leap of faith, but friend, it's better to walk in obedience. Walk in obedience to God. You think about it. This inheritance, he says, is undefiled. Nothing impure can enter. This inheritance fadeth not away. Everything will be eternal. In the beginning of the Bible, we have the pure, beautiful Garden of Eden that God created, where all was pure. At the end of the Bible, in Revelation, we have the heavenly garden that's for the saved, the redeemed. And the Bible says, And there shall no wise enter into that anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work of the abomination or make of the lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. In the beginning, we see a river in the midst of the garden. That river flowed right through the midst. But thank God at the end of the Bible, Revelation, the Bible records, and he showed me a pure river, a water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Just as that sinner woman found the fountain of living water in John 4, Christ is the water of life for every thirsting soul. You come to him, friend, and he'll satisfy every thirst. He'll replace the things of this world with something that will satisfy. Just as in the Garden of Eden when the first tears were shed over Adam and Eve having to go from the garden Ever since then, many tears have been shed in this life. But in the end, in Revelation, we see in God's heavenly garden, it says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Just as in the garden, God closed the door against Adam because of their transgression. God told them to go. At the end, in Revelation, God is inviting all to come through the door. I'm going to tell you that at the, at the beginning, you remember, God had to tell Adam and Eve. You know, that had to have broken the heart of God to help tell his children to leave. But because of sin, that tells me nothing impure can be in heaven. But you come to the end of Revelation and God is inviting all to come through the door. Jesus Christ is that door. And in Revelation 22, 17, and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that hears say, Come, and him that is a thirst, Come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. God is calling all before it's too late to come. Come now. Come to Christ. Come and be saved. I read of a little boy who had been born blind. But following surgery, he was able to start seeing. His first sight was his mother's face. And he cried out. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
And as his mother began to show him all around, he would say, beautiful, beautiful. His mother would say, I tried to tell you so you would understand. Hear me this morning. When we see the face of Jesus, my friend, his face will be the beauty of all we could ever imagine. And when we see heaven and its beauties unfolded, I believe our Lord will say, I tried to tell you so you would understand. But you just couldn't totally grasp it. I want to tell you this morning, friend, we need to have a fresh vision of that place called heaven. And every day we ought to be living because any moment the Lord can call us home. Any moment. If today the Lord should call you home, are you ready? If you was to take your last breath, if your heart would stop beating right now, where would you spend eternity? Heaven or hell? If you're not sure, by all means, come this morning. I've got loved ones I want to see in heaven. I'm determined to make heaven my home. (laughs) I've had some things through the years that try to knock me off course. Oh, how the devil's fought hard. But I want to tell you, my friend, if you're determined by the grace of Jesus, you follow him. You follow him. And one of these days, he'll welcome you home. He'll welcome you home into God's home. Don't you want to be there? Don't you want to be there? This is nothing to play around with. Souls are in the balance of heaven and hell. We would just realize every time we turn on the news, we're hearing of people being shot, people being killed, people overdosing and drugs, people committing suicide. People are losing hope. People are grasping. Friend, I want to tell you, we have the answer. The church has the answer that the world needs. Come to Jesus before it's too late. He's calling you now. I'm going to ask some of you to come and pray. Pray for your home. Pray for your family. Pray for your kids. If you're not ready, come on. Come and pray. As we prepare a song of invitation this morning, I'm going to invite you to stand together. Let's all stand. Friend, are you ready? Come on. How many loved ones do you have that are lost? Some of us have family, husbands that are lost, wives that are lost, children that are lost, parents that are lost, brothers and sisters that are lost. Oh, God, help us this morning to have a sense of urgency about eternity and eternal things. Would you come on to step out? You feel the tug of the Spirit of God on your heart this morning. The Lord's speaking to you. Come on. Come on. God will help you. By the grace of God, you can make heaven your home. By what Christ has accomplished upon the cross. And that he wants all to be saved. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come under repentance. He is long-suffering. He is a very, very long-suffering, merciful Father. One of these days, it's all going to be over. Come on. Father, we pray this morning for these that need to make a decision for Christ right now. Help them, Lord. Help them to surrender their lives to you. We pray, Father, for those that might be watching those that might have gotten away, wandered away, feeling wayward and feeling that there is a distance in their relationship with you. Lord, help them this morning to come and to humble themselves as a little child. Lord, you'll welcome them. 
You'll welcome them into your fold and into your eternal home. So, Father, we're trusting this morning. Holy Spirit, do your work, please, in our midst this morning. Do your work. Help us to just be still as decisions are being made and hearts are being searched. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, amen. Come on. Come pray. Some of you Christians, come and pray with these. Would you just step out and come and encourage them and pray around them? But I also want to ask you, if you feel like you have wandered away, come back to the Lord right now. Come on as we sing. There's a window into heaven That I close my eyes and see Where there are no earthly struggles And the soul there is set free Where the deaf and dumb are shouting Cause the blind can finally see And those crippled legs they'll be dancing Out on the crystal sea See, there's a special place in heaven Where those unborn babies play Where they're rocked in arms by mamas Whose chances slipped away all those unwanted children They say, my dad, he's the king And there's smiles on all their faces As they spin around and sing Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Where the Son of God, He'll be reigning. You see the tears, they'll all be gone. Don't that sound like heaven? Don't that sound like home? Darkness there is overtaken By the light that's always on See, there's a special place in heaven But don't you worry about the cost It was paid in full by Jesus As he hung there on the cross Everything that He promised Will be there just like He said As an eternal reminder For the precious blood He shed Don't that sound like heaven? 
Don't that sound like home Where the Son of God He's reigning You know your tears They'll all be gone Don't that sound like heaven Don't that sound like home Darkness there is overtaken By the light that's always on Darkness there is overtaken by the light that's always on. Church, the pastor loves you with all his heart. He's laid it right out. God wants you to make heaven your home. But you've got to go the way that the pastor's laid out. You've got to go through Jesus Christ. An old devil's going to tell you, I know you've heard preacher after preacher tell you that, well, You've got tomorrow. The old devil's telling you that. It's got tomorrow. No, you don't. You don't know that. The pastor loves you so much, he's trying to tell you today is today. I pray that you didn't take this message lightly because it's very needed. We're living in such a time when we have no assurances. We surely don't. So I really do pray that you've took it to heart what the pastor preached here. And that you meditate on that this afternoon. And if you realize you have not have your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, please do something about it before it's too late. Praise God. Our pastor and his wife are going to go on out into the entryway back there. As I always say, let them know you love them, that you're praying for them, that you care for them, you support them. Amen. Love one another, care for one another, and by all means, be ready. You know not the day or the hour that the Lord cometh. Amen. Praise the Lord in saying that. Brother John, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer today?